All right, guys, so it is Wednesday night, and I have opened this particular call, and I will be recording it to our entire Fit Family Network. Uh, Andrew and I have been going through the Bo Eason um, Personal Story Power Pack, which uh, we were introduced to Bo when Andrew went to Dallas for the Men's Leadership Retreat. Um, it was an amazing event itself, but one of the things that I took the most to and feel like we needed to uh, develop more was our story and learning what our story is and how to present it and uh, get that out to people. So when Andrew was signing my bow, I was intrigued. He got the CD pack, which he didn't ask about, but I'm really glad that he did. And um, he's not one to make impulse decisions like that normally. So it must have been something really pretty awesome that he connected with. So I'm really proud of him for kind of jumping to it and making that purchase. Um, and it's proved to be extremely beneficial. So today I have my notes in front of me to help me stay on track to talk about storytelling. And I feel like this has been a really big topic lately through the Beachbody community and also through kind of business in general and learning how to run a business online and using social media um, and getting your message and your story out there so that you can connect with more people. And that's kind of the key word, is that connecting with people is this age that we're in. We're no longer in the information age. You know, with Steve Jobs and uh, Bill Gates, we're past that. We're in a new era that's all about connecting and your stories and people's stories and relationships with people, which is what we hear from the very beginning as Beachbody coaches is you have to relate to people. You have to be interested in them and get to know them, build that relationship and connect with people. Well, it was kind of like this training came at the right time because that's exactly what we needed. We're at a point in our business where we've kind of hit a lull, things are slowing down, and we're trying to find a new way to ramp things back up, and this is exactly what we needed to hear and to understand. So um, I wanted to talk first, I wanted to give you just a quick example of storytelling and why this is so important, because I learn best by doing by example and um, doing it myself and sharing and hearing real life examples. So. Uh, let's specifically relate this to Beachbody. So let's say that I want to make a post about um, paying off a bill. So I'm going to use my personal life example here. I paid off our will payment to the attorney. We got a will done for our family that's definitely not cheap. Attorneys are super expensive to hire. So uh, we paid off our bill for that attorney fee, which was a lot bigger than I had anticipated. But we were able to pay it off. Um, and one foul sloop and we use some of our um, tax refund money, but okay. So I go and I'm like, this is really awesome. I want to talk about how I've been able to pay this off um, because of what Beachbody has taught me and because of my income, I'm able to pay this off. So option one, I make a post that's something like, thanks to Beachbody, I can pay off this bill that I really wasn't expecting to get. And it's really awesome to know that I have peace of mind, that I don't have to pay, make the payments on this every month. And it's all done for. Thanks, Beachbody, for helping me make income to pay for this bill. Great post. People get the point. You know, Beachbody is in my life. I'm paying off things. People can connect to that on a certain level. Option two. Um, all right. So about three years ago, Andrew and I were thinking about getting another dog. We already have a big dog and we have two kids, but for some reason, I thought it would be brilliant to get another dog. And not any dog, a German Shepherd and a very large German Shepherd. So we went to the store and we were all excited because we were bringing him over. We were gonna get to keep him for a little while to test him out. We got the collar, the name tag, the leash, the dog food bowls, a really big water bowl because now we're gonna have two big dogs. And you know how you're like super excited for this and you're like, oh, we gotta get this bone and this toy and him his own bed. And it's this really cool, exciting thing for you as a family. Well, long story short, we kind of came to our senses and decided not to get another dog. He stayed for a while, he wasn't a good fit anyways, but really getting another dog isn't the best option for our crazy family anyways. Shortly after that decision, I had to return the items to the store. Not only did I have to return what we had bought to the store, other than the water dish, because the dogs already used it, um, I literally had to return those items to the store. I looked at our bank account and it was extremely low, like single digit low. 
and I knew that we had another bill that was going to come out. And when you log in to your bank account and you open that up and you see that balance is low, you know that there's a bill coming out in two days and you know that payday is in four days, that your heart drops, you get really anxious. I remember my heart beating really fast and I remember feeling that pit in my stomach and this chatterbox goes off. I'm a failure. I'm not providing for my family. I have kids that need to be fed and how am I supposed to tell them that they can't do gymnastics because I can't afford it because I've spent all of our money and how am I being a good parent? I'm not a good example. I can't believe our finances are this way again. It's going to overdraft and we're going to get that overdraft fee. And that whole feeling of just failure and stress overwhelms. On top of that, I had to take that feeling and drive my sorry butt to the store to return those things. And the lady at the counter didn't know why I was returning them. I didn't have to tell her and I didn't tell her. She just knew that I was returning a collar and a leash and you know, like a food bowl. And I knew, I knew why I had to return those things and why I needed her to give me cash and not put it back on my card and why I needed to go put that money immediately in the bank account and then sit and pray for that money to go out of the ATM and into my account before that next check or that bill cleared. I knew what it was like to sit there for two or three days and wait and wish and hope and dread and the whole time that chatter's going that I suck at this, I can't believe I'm doing this, I'm drowning in life, I'm barely keeping my head above water, we're overdrafting all the time. And now, it's been three years and I paid off a bill that we got in the mail from an attorney for creating a will that we've known we needed to create for a long time. We have our kids, we travel you know, a decent amount and knowing that they're taken care of is what's priority. I don't really give a crap what happens to the house, but we never had anything in place about what, what was supposed to happen with our children if something should happen to us. So we finally were in a position where we can do that and we knew we needed to. So we you know, took responsibility and got that taken care of. And then we had to pay the bill to the attorney. And three years ago, we didn't have a will because I couldn't even think about affording it. Cause I couldn't even think and fathom about paying an attorney for something like that, that people know it's okay. We'll, we'll do it next year. You put it off and I, not, you know, not only that, but any unexpected bills, we would have absolutely drowned. And now I can pay it off and I can have that peace of mind. I'm not drowning. I'm not worried about having more, you know, month at the end when I'm running out of paycheck. And it's a really awesome feeling because of what Beachbody has taught me and the people it's brought into my life and the income it's provided for my family. Okay, option one or option two? Which one did you connect more with? Which one did you feel yourself in and think and relate to yourself or somebody that you know? Which one did you connect to more? Which one could you relate to? Now it's not perfect, I'm still learning and trying to master this storytelling art, but I know that my speech was a little long and it's not meant to be short because people need more than one sentence to connect to. And that's the point. So get comfortable with making videos because that's when people are really gonna be able to see you. They're gonna see your facial expressions. They're gonna connect with your smile and your tone of voice. Video is so much more personal. And you can speak better and you can get practice at it. Even if you feel like you suck, people are going to know that you're being honest and genuine. So making videos is definitely priority on your list and learning your story is what we're going to talk about next. So 
there's um, a couple of exercises. So I want you to have a piece of paper, grab a piece of paper and a pen, and I want you to write down these steps because we're not gonna walk through this together, but this is what Bo had us do on his program, and it's absolutely amazing and very eye-opening. Um, so you have your pen and a piece of paper, and you are going to write. And you're probably sitting there that I'm not a writer, I'm, this is why I don't even blog, I sucked at my writing classes, I was horrible in English, um, I'm not a writer, I can't do this. Okay, you can put pen to paper and there is something absolutely magical and about putting pen to paper and moving it and having that motion and the energy from your brain down your arm through the pen. That's why I write my to-do list. That's why you write your goal list out. Physically writing something is different than typing it on a computer. So set a timer for seven minutes. That's step one. Step two is you are going to write about an event in your life for seven minutes. So set the timer, push start, write any event. Just start writing. Do not stop, don't correct yourself, don't punctuate it, just keep writing and let the details come out onto paper. You will notice that it's difficult to get started, but once you get started and the story starts going through your head, it's easier. Okay, so for seven minutes you write. So those are your two steps that you got right now. You set the timer and you write a story and events that happened in your life for seven minutes. Okay, next exercise is the same seven minutes. Set the timer for seven minutes. And now you're going to pick a low point in your life or a struggle that you've had or a conflict that happened in your life that seems, you know, it stands out to you. It's got some impact on your life. Pick that moment and write for seven minutes about that event. This time, go into detail. Like, Bo's example is like, if you're writing about your dad's hands, a childhood memory with about your dad's hands, I want to know the, the texture, the color, what you smell, what they feel like, where, where you are, the environment you're in. Like, go into detail detail about that situation, what you feel, what you taste, what you hear, what you smell, what you see, all of the details. I know it's only for seven minutes, but do this exercise seven minutes, pick a low point or a struggle, write the details, and the next part is that when you start, start right in the middle of the action. So if you pick, like, I broke up with my boyfriend, like, you're going to go right to, you know, I told Jimmy I never want to see him again. Like that's where your starting point. You have to start right at the action. Don't worry about setting the scene and setting the stage and filling in all the details and getting everybody set. Go right to the details that are the action of your story. Start there and detail everything out for seven minutes about this low point in your life, this struggle that you've had, this impactful turning point that you've dealt with. Okay, so those are the two exercises that you're gonna do. And I really want you to take the time to do this. It will be so beneficial for you because you'll be so surprised the events that come to mind and the stories that come to mind that, that you instantly start writing about. Okay, so that's discovering your story, finding your story, is you just have to put pen to paper and set seven minutes on the clock and start writing. Don't stop, you have to just go and do and be and write ferociously. You can, you have permission. I am giving you permission to be the worst writer on the planet. Does not matter. You just need to put pen to paper and go with it. The final part to developing your story, once you have discovered the story that you feel the most connection to, something about a struggle and a low point in your life, something that you've been through, you have to repeat this process again and again and again and again until you get it to the details, to the excitement. I mean, he both took this story um, and he turned it into 90 minutes of a play. Like he created it into a screenplay and he does it off, you know, off Broadway and presents it around the world and all that. So go into that much detail that somebody could take it and pretty much tweak it just a little bit and make it into a play, could make it into a movie, could make it into a book. Go into detail and repeat it and repeat it because the whole point is step three to my whole talk here. You want to master your story. 
Mastery is something that our society has gotten really far away from. We're instant gratification. We're constantly going from subject to subject to task to task, to new fad to new fad. Nobody masters one thing anymore. One thing. Master it. This is your story. This is your life. You've lived it. You feel it. You are connected to it. It's a blood memory for you. Master that. That's, this is you. Master yourself. Get really comfortable with who you are, what you've been through, and own the fact that you have walked miles in your life. You have been through something. There are so many people that I know you're sitting there because I was the same way. You're sitting there and you're like, I don't have anything to talk about. I'm pretty normal. I haven't had an exciting life. I haven't really been through much. You know, I didn't get in a car accident and end up in a coma for three months or I didn't, uh, you know, lose a child or I've never battled cancer or you have been through things and you are the only one that has been through the things that you've been through. You are unique. You have a story. That's what makes you you. You have a path that you have walked from birth till now in your life, and you have been through things. You have not gone through life with great ease. You have struggled through things. You've overcome things. You've been through stuff. You just need to sit down and put pen to paper and write it. Own your life and your story. If you can master your story, telling your story and practice that over and over and over. And when you present it to people, you speak with emotion and connection. And it's not about being overly dramatic because that comes off as cheesy. You have to be authentically you. And I would hope through this process that you discover more about yourself and you start to connect with yourself again. You are what people want to connect with. Being on stage and presenting yourself through videos is the single most lucrative way to grow your brand, to sell your products, and to make money. And making money is not a bad thing. Don't ever shy away from making money. We need money to go around. Having more money allows you to reach more people, to help more people, allows you to live a better lifestyle and to, to do what you want to do and what you're meant to do with your life and reach more people with your message. There are people waiting to hear your story and to connect to you. There are people waiting to find somebody that says, you're not alone in your struggles. You're not alone in what you're experiencing. But you are unique. You are the only one that has been through what you've been through and responded in the way that you've responded and gotten you to where you are in your life today. Own that and master it. Mastering your own story and being comfortable with who you are and confident in telling people who you are is going to help you in life and build relationships and in business. Uh, I think that is everything I have on my notes. It's a really awesome, awesome program. And if you're not following Bo Eason, if you've never watched any of his videos, I highly recommend you do. He's a really great, great guy to learn from. His style is different, um, but that's kind of what we need now. We need to understand our story and how to connect with people more and better because especially as beach body coaches, um, since I know that's who's going to be watching this primarily, we don't want to be a brand for Beachbody. Beachbody is a billion dollar brand for itself. So if your social media newsfeed and your videos and all that are all Beachbody stuff, and Sean T is all over the place saying dig deeper, and Autumn Calabrese is up there and saying that just happened, and you know Tony is all over your page, and Shakeology is throwing up all over the place, that's not what people want to see. We don't need Beachbody more advertising for Beachbody. They do it themselves, and that's what's so great about the program. That's so what's so great about coaching with Beachbody. They advertise for us. We do not need to advertise more for them. People need to hear our stories and our testimonials about what this opportunity and the products have done for us. That's our job. 
People need to hear our life stories and what we've been through and know that we are valuable and we have an impact and nobody is alone in the struggles they're experiencing in this life and they can connect with anybody and reach out and say hi and get help and move forward to create the life that they want to live. Beachbody does not need more advertisement. They need more stories. Because facts tell, it's the stories that sell. It's the stories that connect you to other people. It's the stories that build your community and your tribe and your friendships and your relationships and your business and your team. That's what you need. You need to start owning the life that you have been through. Take responsibility for that life and own it and turn it into this message that people need to hear because we do. Everybody needs to hear that story, your story. We don't need more actors playing a part. We don't need more commercials with cheesy pickup lines and, and stuff like that. We need stories about people overcoming things and achieving things in life and doing more with their life. That's what we need more of. More connection, more reality, more authentic people that are confident in who they are. So that's my little spiel for tonight on this Wednesday. And I will be posting the recording. I'll probably upload it to YouTube to make it easier. Um, and my team will have direct access to it as well. So if there's any questions or anything, feel free to email me or um, find me on social media or YouTube or whatever you need. Have a great week, guys. Go do those exercises and develop your story.